morning. My name is Denise Dominguez. I'm a solutions consultant here at Sprig, and we'll be running through how you can capture constant user feedback with Sprig's new feedback standalone button. And then as we navigate through today's webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A section below. We'll be running through a couple of slides to show showcase and present again what this new feature entails, potential use cases, and then we'll actually dive into the Sprig platform to um, create a feedback button. So what is Sprig feedback? Uh, so overall, you know, how users think about feedback um, is on constantly capturing that user insights with that standalone feedback button that feels native to your product experience. And then with Sprig, you'll really get this AI powered product recommendations synthesizing feedback responses. So really, again, allowing you to constantly capture what users think about your product experience. Oops. And then what users will see. So users will see that omnipresent feedback button that's on a specific side of the page. As you can see here in the video, it would showcase there. It will only pop up if the user actually clicks on the feedback button. And then again, users do not have to go to another page to complete that survey. And then just to showcase again and really classify the difference between Sprig surveys versus Sprig feedback. So Sprig surveys are really those hyper-targeted surveys that are right in your user experience that are very specific to users' actions. So really user action driven that presents the surveys versus Sprig feedback is that always on continuously capturing um, insights in your product experience button. And again, users are actively going into that feedback button to open up the survey. And then overall, just Sprig feedback features. So a few of the key product features that our feedback button has is one, just an overall seamless setup. So you can really launch a feedback button within a couple of minutes to again, enjoy the ongoing insights on either all pages or specific pages. Two, you can capture feedback at scale. So you could really get three times more customer feedback with these bite-sized prompts that are easily built in within your website experience. And then lastly is you can actually instantly analyze the feedback responses to really get action items from the AI and really that AI powered feed for potential product opportunities that are being captured within the feedback button. And then what's really great about Sprig is you can fully customize this. So one, we have button appearance placement. You can place the feedback button on various areas, either on desktop web, mobile web. You can change the label copy and just the default coloring from light to dark. You can also change the study appearance or survey appearance. It can either be on the slider aspect or it'll open up the center module. And then lastly, is you can still completely customize the styling with CSS to really make it match the look and feel of your product or website experience. So full customization is available for the survey feedback button. And then how to utilize Sprig feedback. So just thinking about some potential use cases and what we've noticed as popular use cases is one, to find and fix bugs or overall identifying pain points. How can we easily uncover product issues before they turn into customer support tickets and really be ahead of the curve there? And then two, constantly and automatically track NPS or CSET. So how can you constantly get that pulse of customer satisfaction and loyalty? So that way, again, it's autopilot constantly across your product. And then third, continuously optimize your product experience. So continuously keep an user's ongoing input on your product throughout their journey there. And then what's really great is you can get, you know, a really easily and quick started guide to Sprig feedback. So easily just customize your feedback study, review the results in real time, and then really allow that AI to serve as the top product takeaways. So that way you're identifying potential opportunities um, and it's all being done continuously for you.
And then great, this is what we'll dive into the platform demo itself. But like I mentioned, please feel free to use the Q&A section below with any questions as we navigate through. But again, we'll focus on the feedback feature here. So within the Sprig platform, this is our template collection. I'm actually going to start from scratch here just to talk through how we can actually create one completely from scratch. So I can select a, a, a open-ended or close-ended scale here. I'm going to start with the close-ended question and just label this about, tell me about your experience. And then you'll see the preview will start to automatically update depending on my question type. I can even change the range scale if I'm selecting a range scale. But like, as I mentioned, these are fully customizable to your product experience. So you can change the font size, font color, change the logo that's being changed here, add your logo, change again, the complete styling of the feedback button. You can also add multiple questions, either if it's a close-ended first, and then maybe we wanna follow up with an open-ended, such as, you know, expand about your rating. Or again, maybe we want to add skip logic depending on the rating scale um, or potential options. So maybe you're giving them feedback on specific product experiences. Maybe we want to actually ask a multiple choice rating question. We do have a couple of customers that utilize this with the multiple choice option as well. Um, so just another point there. So that's essentially the first piece of setting up your desired questions. You can even preview the study to see what that experience would look like for the end user, especially if you had that advanced skip logic. Um, so you can see how the questions align there to the end user for both the web, desktop web, and then mobile web experience. But like I mentioned, fully customizable there. Once your questions have been designed as you desired, we would actually move over to the audience tab here. And then what's really great is Sprig is that one time setup. So once Sprig has been installed, we would go into the targeting. And this is really where you're gonna define, okay, where in the product experience do I wanna present the feedback button? Do I wanna present this on all of my website or product experience pages? Is it on a specific page? Maybe it's a docs page or a help support page. Um, this is really where you're defining, again, how you might wanna separate the data um, or if you want this to continuously surface on all pages. And then I see we have a question here. Did you say fonts can be configured and customized for the study? If so, where? Yes, you can customize the font um, style that is selected here. That would actually be directly within our settings page. I can present that here. You would go into the settings page and then you'll see here, you'll see surveys. So those targeted surveys. But down here, we would look at feedback in bold. And then this is where you can have full study customization of the feedback button. So we can fully customize the font, the sizing. And what's really great is this is a one-time setup. So once your team has designed and selected your design, uh, specific styling fonts, sizing of the feedback button, that's a one-time setup. Any additional changes or new feedback buttons that you wanna present, they will reflect the changes there. Of course, you can always go in and edit or change any of the styling. But again, that's a great thing to be able to set it and forget it and then continuously run any feedback um, studies from there. Great, great question there. Um, and then also you can specify to show to specific users if that was ever the case. Maybe you really are trying to gather feedback specifically from users that are based out of a specific maybe location or potential plan types. Maybe you only want to gather speed feedback um, on users that follow under a specific criteria or potentially even a B test feedback and maybe have a feedback button for a variant users versus B variant. Um, that's just an option there. But again, if you wanted to showcase this to every possible user, you would just leave this section blank. And again, just utilize the page or multiple pages. 
And then another piece that really differentiates us and Sprig just in general of our feature here is you can actually attach a session replay recording to the feedback button. So really think about this if you are having this ever present feedback button across multiple pages and you wanna actually present a recording to get really this holistic view of the user's response from the feedback, but also being able to play back the actions that they took directly within the moment. Was it a user error? Is it just overall identifying pain points and uncovering potential user paths that are not ideal and how that commonality goes across multiple user groups? So here, if you do enable it, you would just toggle this on. And again, we're really hyper-targeted. So we have up to five minutes here, and then we can start recording before the user clicks on the feedback button, after or before and after. So really, again, giving you 10 times more context to the user's response itself. And then of course you have the option to run this continuously until you decide to stop the survey or until you reach a specific number. But that's really it. The last piece is the design element. So across the styling features, we do have some out of the box options such as placement. So where on the desktop web do you want to present the survey? Is it on the right hand, bottom right hand, left, left bottom side? And then even again for mobile experience as well, we even have the option to disable on the mobile web experience. But then also you can change the labeling. So maybe you wanna utilize this to again, identify pain points or to submit bug tickets. Um, you have that option there as well. But like I mentioned, full customization. And then if they click on the survey on the feedback button, you could either have it as that default slider, so it opens up on that sliding experience, or maybe it's actually updating it and uh, presenting that survey or that feedback button in the center of that web experience or mobile web experience. So tons of functionality there for you to set up the survey um, that is available for you. And then I see we have another question. So um, what about different languages? Where do you customize that? That is a great question. So right now um, you would have to create different feedback, standalone feedback buttons, um, and then target them based off of the language criteria. Um, right now we do have the ability, so we do have that other in-app or targeted surveys that has the ability to upload different languages. I do eventually think that our product team um, plans to continue that feature for the standalone feedback button. But as of today, you would have to create that standalone feedback button in different languages. And then in the targeting, we would define that language as an attribute to target the user in the desired language. But like I mentioned, we do plan overall to make this a lot easier for you and your team to be able to do this within a single feedback button. Great questions there. So once the feedback button has been designed and you know the targeting has been set in place, we would then actually go into the analysis view. So this is a typical analysis view. So this is an example of a feedback review. This one has a replay attached to it, but like I mentioned, the replay is completely optional. You do not need to attach the replay to a feedback button. And then what you'll see here is one in the overview page, you can enter a study goal. So maybe again, it's on a specific page, or again, you're asking a very targeted question on the feedback button is it to identify those pain points or submit bugs. What is your overall goal for the study itself? And then that will just allow the summary of the AI summary to be more catered to your study goal. So one, the summary will look at all of the feedback responses and then provide either a top key takeaway or like this, a couple of sentences synthesizing and summarizing the survey data for you to again, really allow you and your team to focus more on that strategic research there. And then of course you can also filter responses based off of either a rating or a specific attribute. So maybe I wanna only see responses that you know users 
fall under a specific plan type or role type, or again, however you are categorizing your user group, you'd be able to filter the responses below. And then this is typically what a visualization would look like for a close ended. So if it's that rating scale or multiple choice, we can change the visual representation there, see how it's changing over time. But really, again, allowing you to see all of the responses there for that close ended. And then if you attached that session replay recording, so again, we would be able to play back what those users were doing directly within either before the survey uh, feedback submission was made or after. And then again, you can go through these clips, see and get more context to those user actions and user flows there. And again, really allowing you to get more insight, you know, especially if you had this across multiple pages, really diving into, okay, what feedback are they giving me on the open text? Or if they're giving, you know, just the rating scale, how can I see more context there? So it seems like we have another question. So it looks like the feedback study shows continuously. So users could submit multiple times. If so, can you place any limits on a number of submissions per user? And if a user submits two ratings on different days, will both of their responses be aggregated and the results are only the most recent? That's a great question. So right now, let's take the first question. If it is shown continuously, and then yes, users can submit answers multiple times in the experience. Um, and then the second question would be, if so, can you place any limits on the number of submissions per user? So as of today, we do not have, so if we just go back to that example here, the only thing in the response setting is either continuously or until a specific number. Um, we don't have it as a survey level. So we're really looking at the feedback, that standalone feedback as that ever present, ever continuously gathering that response data, especially if you're looking at across different pages or across all of your pages. So we do want to allow users to give feedback multiple times, again, depending on the experience. Um, we do have a response limit on only our survey capabilities, so that targeted in-app surveys, just an example here. So when we're targeting a specific survey um, in the user experience, that is the only feature that we currently cap on the feedback button. We do allow for multiple submissions um, on a single user within a day or multiple days. And then the second question would be, if a user submits two ratings on different days, will both of their responses be aggregated in the results or only the most recent? So if a user did come in here and let's say today they gave a rating of eight, tomorrow they gave a rating of six, you would see those as two different survey or feedback submissions. However, we do have essentially a user profile where you would be able to identify who the user is. So for an example here, if we are tracking that user, depending on the SDK that gets installed, you would see that survey feedback under that single profile of the user. So we would be able to see all of their submissions across all of the feedback or surveys or replays within a single user profile. However, in the analysis of the feedback, we would count both submissions. Um, so hopefully that answers all of the questions there um, for that ever present feedback button. Um, of course, you know, we're always open to any insights or any additional feedback um, of how we can continuously improve this feature for both targeting, but also the analysis view. And then another piece here for the AI analysis that we offer. So for any open text, so if we are following up with an open text question, essentially what we've done here is we have our AI model along with our chat GBT rollout for open AI. So essentially we look at all of these responses. We don't take the approach of a key word search or word cloud approach. We're really looking at the context of what these users are saying in responses. And then our AI will start to look at correlations between responses and then 
group them together in this overarching theme. And then we also even provide a sentence that's providing even more context to the theme itself, but really doing more of that heavy lifting work for you. So that way, again, your team is focused more on that strategic review. And then you can see these high level bucketed responses. Um, but of course, you can dive into one of these themes, see individual responses if you would like. And then if you attached a replay, you would also be able to replay that uh, response view as well. So that's another feature that we have for you. So again, being able to summarize all of the survey data for you um, with those instant uh, open text AI and the summary of the overall study um, across all of the responses there. Well, great. So that was essentially a high level overview of the standalone feedback button. 